My name is Cy Montgomery, and I'm the author of Temple Grandin, How the Girl Who Loved Cows Embraced Autism and Changed the World. Well, most people who know my work either know me as a children's writer or as an adult writer, because I've written, I, I think, I don't know how many are in print right now, but I've written 17, a couple are coming on online very soon, and they're all about animals. Most of my work takes me to rainforests or cloud forests or deserts. I write about pink dolphins in the Amazon. I've written about man-eating tigers in Bangladesh and West Bengal. Uh, I've written about my pig, Christopher Hogwood, who grew to 750 pounds and lived 14 years, dying of old age in his sleep. I wasn't going to eat him. I'm a vegetarian. My husband's Jewish. He was a very safe pig. Uh, so this book about Temple it seems a little out of line with that, but it's not really, because it's all about different minds. So my work is kind of as a whole. Well, I just love Temple from the moment we first spoke on the phone. When I first called her after we negotiated this contract to do the book, um, I reached her answering service and she called me back. Well, you never knew when she was going to call you back. She happened to call back while I was playing one of my favorite CDs, which is The Calls of Frogs and Toads, which is quite loud. So I pick up the phone, and in the background, there's all these frogs trilling. And it's the first time I've spoken to her. And I said, oh, let me turn down the frogs. And I get back. She's like, oh, nice CD. So I knew we would get along just fine. So when I met her, when I first met her, I flew out to Colorado. She lives in Fort Collins, and she was very generous with her time. I got to go to her condo. I got to actually go in her squeeze machine, which the hydraulic controls have actually failed at this point. So she actually put me in it like in a you know, waffle maker. And it was really cool to be in that and have her controlling the, the, the squashing action. Um, and I felt very safe. And she was so generous about letting me into her world. People have come up to me and said, thank you for acknowledging that there are different kinds of minds out there. And people bring that sentiment both from the autism community and the animal community. Because when you think of it, animals have different kinds of minds than the majority of the people who are in power. And their minds are very interesting too. And they bring to the world all kinds of wonderful gifts as well as those people whose minds are different because they might be on the autism spectrum or they might have some other thing about their minds that makes them different. Different, but not less. And that's one of the big messages of, of the book is to, to find your gift. We need your mind. If your mind is different, all the better. We need those differences to apprehend this world in, in a true and a complete way. What I'm working on now, uh, I'm having a blast. I'm actually writing two books, one for kids, one for adults, and this is about octopus. And I've been working with the giant Pacific octopus at the New England Aquarium. I've learned to scuba dive, so I've met some octopus in the wild. And here is an animal whose mind is really very different. They're related to clams and snails, and yet they're very smart. They recognize individual humans, even when the humans are identically dressed. And this, this has been scientifically tested. They're really smart. They're able to work all kinds of puzzles. They can even get the cap off the Tylenol Extra Strength pain reliever bottle, which many PhDs cannot do. They solve problems beautifully. And yet their brains, their brains are wrapped around their throat, and three-fifths of their neurons aren't even in their brains. They're in their arms. So here is a really interesting mind to explore, and I'm having a blast. Not to mention that they're the most expressive animals. I mean, all the stuff that I've written pales compared to the way they can express themselves. They can change color. They can change shape. They can look like almost anything. I mean, if, if I were that expressive, I think I'd be a Nobel laureate right away.